Welcome back guys, Reggie versus Solace coming back at you guys with a long awaited video that I've been trying to prepare out. And this one is talking about two mace weapons, right? So if you guys know, follow me on my YouTube channel, follow in the Twitch stream, twitch.tv Reggie versus Solace by the way. Hit me up with a subscription or a follow. But I've been leveling my third warrior. So I have three warriors. One uses uh, two one-handed swords, do wield. Um, the other one only uses two-handed swords, that's Gressel. And then I crafted a third warrior, leveled her up to 60, and uh, she's using maces, and that's her name, maces. She uses uh, two-handed maces for PvP and the one-handed maces for PvE content. So, I have the warrior right here, and um, I, I'm on a small population server, so there isn't any horde hammersmiths, like master hammer, hammersmiths. Um, and it was two maces that I wanted created, and they were only they're they're only craftable by 300 hammersmiths. So I had to go to a uh, alliance player, and it took a long time, but he was able to get one of the hammers done. The second hammer he didn't have the, the, the plans for. Luckily, someone was selling it on the Horde Auction House, and I decided to level blacksmithing and go hammersmith so I can be the Horde, not only the Horde only swordsmith on my server, with Warblade, my main character. Now, with Maces, I'm also the Horde's only hammersmith. So I wanted to talk about these two items here. The first one's called the Persuader, and the second one is called the Ebon Hand. I now have those in concert with each other. Um, for the first time and I wanted to show you guys how they kind of interact with each other and the DPS you can put and the DPS you can do with them. So talking about the Persuader real quick. The Persuader is a one-handed mace 2.70 attack speed so it's nice and slow you get big crits with it. <clears throat> the only knock being in that was phase 5 and we're in the middle of phase 5 is the 45.7 damage per second you can find better uh, damage per second weapons, especially maces, since we're talking maces, and AQ-20, <clears throat> which is a sand polished reaver, um, sand polished hammer. I'm trying to get that. Um, it hasn't dropped for me yet, but I run AQ every three days trying to get it. Um, we use a soft rest system so you can soft reserve one item, and if it drops, you roll against anyone else who soft rest. That, that item that you soft rest if no one did it you get the item it, it becomes a hard res if you're the only one to soft res it so I ended up crafting the persuader yesterday and I, I, I tested it out in a raid um, I'll post I'll post that raid to the channel um, I won't tag it to this video because a lot of people like these videos to be short and sweet so I'll keep it um, to another video you guys can be able to check the links out to the two but the persuader 45.7 uh, top end damage um, damage per second and it's 161 top end which is decent the sand polished hammer is 181 so it's only 20 20 or more top end damage higher and of course that's a phase 5 item this could be crafted if I, if I recall correctly in phase 2 it might be available in phase 1 so if you guys don't know uh, classic servers are going to refresh again so these videos, these type of videos that I'm doing to, um, to talk about the weapon specifics are always going to be relevant. Um, even though we're moving on into the end of Classic and the beginning of Burning Crusade content. So, the Persuader here, you see how I have it. It's 45.7 uh, damage per second, 161 top end damage, and it's a nice and slow attack speed of 2.70. The equipped on it is it gives you a, um, a percent chance to hit, which is awesome. Very few weapons give you a percent chance to hit that are viable in raiding situations. And then also it gives you a chance to crit by 1%, which is 20 agility for warriors, right? Because maces can use, I'm not maces, but rogues can use this weapon. Um, but it also gives you that 1% uh, that chance to hit too, along with 1% chance to crit. So I've been using this and able to provide some really good results from it. I combined it with this weapon that I had crafted here too, the Ebon Hand, 
and the Ebon hand, it gives you 9 stamina and 7 fire resistance. Nothing too good to write at home about, but it's a good offhand mace. You can also use it as a main hand until you get something a little stronger. It, it's, a, it's a good combo weapon. It's a good in-between weapon. Um, the proc is nothing to shout home about. Um, the chancel hit sends a shadowy bolt at the enemy causing 125 to 275 shadow damage. It procs fairly decently, but it's nothing to write home about. But even if it didn't have a proc on it, it's still a decent weapon because it's 168 top end damage, which is the exact same as your Brutality Blade. And remember, these are phase one, phase two type weapons that get crafted. Um, it's a lot harder, of course, in the earlier phases. They're a lot more valuable um, being as their rarity, and it takes a good amount of consumables to farm these, to, 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 to craft them. But, but, Combining them together, I'm still able to do top three overall damage um, in phase five. And that's what I wanted to show you guys. So, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm fairly geared out. This this warrior is only two weeks old at level 60. Um, I hit, I dinged level 60 two weeks ago, um, as of this recording, which is in October. Um, that you got the Lionheart Helm, True Strike Shoulders. I still want to upgrade these. Fury of the Sw um, Forgotten Swarm in AQ20. It's a baby on Nixian neck. Um, I got the Cloak of Fire Maw yesterday. It's pretty good. Got it enchanted with the Phase 5 uh, enchant. Breastplate of Bloodthirst. This is like a Phase 1, Phase 2 type of chest uh, until better can be found. Um, the key thing about the Bloodthirst though, that a lot of people don't know. You're only getting it in this video. I'm not making a separate video about it. This is only 14 agility less than a Savage Gladiator chain. And it has uh, 6 more stamina. Just to put that out there. It's 14 agility less and six more stamina than your S, uh, your Savage Gladiator G, which is uh, SGC. So if you if if the pristine high does drop in Ubers and you're you, you're having to farm 30, 40, 50, 60 times to get your Savage Gladiator chain with no results, go for this chest here because it's the same strength. 13, they both give you 26 attack power from Warriors. They both give you, like, there's no difference. They both give you 2% chance to crit. Um, the Savage Gladiator Chain gives you 14 more agility, which is like a half a percent uh, chance to crit. And this one gives you six more stamina. And that's the difference. And, and of course, this one gives you a, a chance to dodge by one. So it's, like, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of a mitigation type thing also. Um, you get the 1% chance to dodge and 14 less agility basically. And it's the stamina is 6 more on this one versus the Savage Gladiator Chain. It's not a total downgrade. Is is it less? Yes, you want the agility, but you gain you do gain some stats by using this also. You can still pump and do top 3 damage. Uh, moving on with that, you have the Risk Cause of True Flight, Flame Guard Gauntlet's Molten Core, uh, Zandalari belt, Titanic leggings, all my warriors have this basically. Uh, boots of Shadow Flame, I love these boots. I was happy to get these from a GDKP, G GDKP run. GDKP run. Um, I could upgrade these rings to get more crit. And of course you got your Hand of Justice and your Dark Moon Power Maelstrom. You can also use your Black Hand's Breath. Um, use your Flask when you're, when you're fighting bosses. This is good for AOE damage also as it gives you 22 raw attack power if you combine it with your Hand of Justice. Those are good there too. And then of course, you know, you're moving on. The reason why I didn't go for DFT yesterday is because I'm at 12 hit and that'll give me 14 hit, which I do not need. I need 9% hit, but I'll get it the next time it drops. So it's going to drop. It drops a lot doing a GDKP run. So we're cool. We're good to go there. All right. Talking about the Persuader and the Ebon Hand. Let's show it in action. So we start off damaging here. All right. You see the, the numbers there, 248. And then boom, you hit it with a nice execute. Execute was 850. Let's get in these guys real quick. Show you how good the um, these two maces are. All right. So we want to text executes. So that execute was a little bit. He went down. We can do some cleaving damage. We will be good to go. So that was 718. Do some more cleaves. These guys are going to melt easily. Yeah, they're not going to be too much of a headache. Oh, damn. 10 to 
one one K right there, boys. That was strong. Eight seven. Mm, Fifteen oh eight, boys. See, that's the damage you can still get from these phase one, phase two weapons right here. You saw the damage right there, the output that we were pumping. We were, we were over here just farming shards, um, getting these uh, corrupted soul shards right here, these. But just wanted to one give a, a quick breakdown of the weapons that I'm using and also the gear that I have. I'm gonna say this warrior right here is only a level, uh, she's only a level 60 for two weeks. Um, but it's pretty strong uh, using it with hand of, Ju um, hand of Justice and your Dark Moon card Maelstrom. Um, you don't have to use the Maelstrom. You can use your counter attack Lodestone. You can use your Flask. You can use your Black Hands Breath. This is the bread and butter combo for a lot of warriors as it boosts your crit up to 28.5. You can still do that. We'll fight one more guy there too. Uh, always lead with your Bloodthirst. Of course, don't click like me so you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about that. And then the hand, the hand of justice proc right there just knocked him out, which is pretty cool. So we'll do one more there. Bloodthirst, 807 Bloodthirst, boys. And then 1219 crit, and you get a soul shard. So that's showing off right here, boys, that this is still an awesome uh, combo. The attack power right there is 1162, which is not too bad. And it's almost 400 top end damage when using these two weapons. Remember, these are phase like two weapons that I'm using in phase five until like the AQ40 and the AQ20 maces drop. And then I'll do an update video, but um, I'm super satisfied with the uh, Persuader right here. I can craft these on DV Delight if, if I know some of my followers um, are also on the server. I can craft this horde side and of course I can craft for Alliance also. And then Ebon Hand, um, my friend the dude, uh, can uh, can craft this for you guys. For the Hordes also, because he crafted mine, you just trade it through the neutral auction house. Got the, you know, got the Strikers Mark, you know, GDKP run, so those have been treating me very well. Similar how Froster Damage does his. So you check these weapons out here, boys. Persuader, Ebon Hand, quick guide on those. Uh, good weapons still in phase five. I'm still able to do good damage, still able to get top three, and I'm pushing for top one. Showing you guys that you can click buttons. Um, you can still click your spells and still top the charts. I do it majority of the time, if not all, um, no matter what the outcome is. So, Reggie versus Solace here, guys. New, new video on the Persuader and the Ebon Hand um, maces that I'm using. Uh, most Hordes do not use maces. They go swords and axes. I kind of want to be different and that's what the channel is about. It's about being different, embracing your individuality and uh, trying different things your way and still being able to compete with people that are cookie cutter. It's not a cookie cutter channel. I'm not a cookie cutter person that you guys can see. I'm not going to be the, the average streamer that you guys um, have tuned into. But if you give it a chance to tune in, you may find something you like. Reggie vs. Solace, New God, Ebon Hand, and the Persuader signing up. Peace.